Hello everybody, Sai Starcraft here, and this is uh, this is a little bit awkward because you guys have been following my Rogue Legacy playthrough, and I haven't really been able to record everything and keep up on the storage space on my hard drive because it's such a grindy and long game. So I ended up playing a lot, and I mean a whole lot, without actually recording it. And so what you're seeing now is me fighting the third boss already. Yeah, I, I skipped most of uh, the tower, the third stage, uh, most of the recording anyway, and I jumped straight into the bosses. And this is for two reasons, like I said, the storage space and just the amount of stuff I was recording was just so much, I didn't want you guys to get bored of it. And also, um, well, I guess I already mentioned this, I didn't want you guys to get bored of it, because like I said, it was a lot of grinding and shit like that, but as you can see here, expertly taking down the third boss. This video is going to include the third boss and the fourth boss. Fourth boss, of course, being the boss of the underworld. And uh, so I apologize to any of you who actually wanted to see the tower zone or the underworld zone. But this is what you get, so fucking deal with it, okay? It's not easy, you know, making five billion fucking videos and keeping it entertaining at the same time. So, uh, yeah, you can see teleported back to the tower, which is the homeworld of that boss. And now here is going to be the fourth, bo fourth boss. He is a giant slime, and every time you pop open one of the big slimes, a caster comes out. So normally it would be a pretty simple boss. The slimes aren't super dangerous. But then those casters come out, and you don't really know, should I focus the caster? Should I focus the slimes? What do I do? You can't really tell how much life the boss has because there's so many separate little slimes but uh, as you can see here I did go the route of the paladin that's what I decided to beat the last boss with as well just because the blocking mechanic is really good you saw against the last boss I was able to block a lot of hits that otherwise would have killed me he's got good life and uh, good damage 91 damage is pretty good for this type of situation and you can see I'm level 116 I got so many different upgrades that I didn't go over but uh, if you guys haven't played the game I recommend you play it. it's only $15 and it's uh, a lot of fun so uh, just trying to keep on the move. I don't want to get, you know, sniped by any of the slimes. They have very simple pathing. Uh, they just kind of jump around. They don't jump too high. And I want to keep my block up whenever I'm unsure about any hits that will come. But you can see I have destroyed all of the mages. So now I'm just kind of looking for a good opportunity to pick off whatever slimes I have. I've got about half my life. Plenty of mana for blocking. And then one jumps up into me. One uh, caster popping out and getting hit by that slime. Not blocking in time. Just a little bit too late. Luckily I'm able to isolate that caster. Another caster popping out. Giant chasm, giant uh, stalagmite, I should say, popping up from under the ground. And the flight is so helpful against bosses, especially in like wide open areas like this. And yet another caster popping out. It's always going to be that same green caster. And the tiniest slimes that you see below me, they actually don't pop out anything. So I can go for them uh, if I want to. And uh, there's not really any penalties. And I think when you pop the smaller slimes, the casters have less life than like when you pop a, a larger slime uh, like in the beginning when you're just first attacking it so as you can see this one takes a little bit longer I take my time much much more I don't really need to be hasty because there's not really any build up any threatening presences around the only time I might need to rush a little bit is if there are casters because every time they cast that's another chance uh, that I might be hit so doing pretty well so far and again these smaller slimes they all give you plus 9 HP if you've got that much vamp vampirism so that's good as well finally chopping down that last slime the spikes are disabled once you defeat the boss so you don't have to worry about that the animation still plays but the spikes uh, don't actually work collecting all my fatty loots and gonna be moving on to the final boss so remember in the beginning when they had those four glyphs on the door and every time you kill a boss one of them lights up well, that's where you're going to be going next. Just doing a quick little fly around to make sure I didn't miss anything. And getting some stats. Victory for Blue Rogue Legacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to sneeze. Oh, shit. I need to sneeze. Oh, never mind. It went away. And so, yeah. As you can see, the fourth glyph lighting up. And apparently the one in the middle as well. And now we're going to be finding out who's really behind all of this madness madness blah 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 of course they're gonna give you some more destructibles to break because it wouldn't be a uh, rogue legacy without just a fuck ton of things to kill passing up that coin because I'm such a baller I don't need a fucking coin not a whole lot to see on the map actually there are some guards apparently and critical hit on that motherfucker they drop so much gold, man. The underworld and like this little area right here, they drop so much freaking money. I don't know what the point of those two guards is, actually, because that might be the only enemies until you actually get to the uh, the boss. 
This is just like a little build up area. Down attack this, you think? Oh, is that like where the tutorial was or something? Like they're trying to bring it back to that whole thing? I don't. I actually didn't play the tutorial, so I'm not quite sure. But, uh, yep. The final notebook. Today marks the rest of eternity. Who would have known it'd be the fountain of youth? Blah, 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 blah. I can't read as fast out loud as I can when I was uh, recording this, apparently. But, uh, basically, some people died and, like, the fountain of youth is there and he drank it or the prince is... I, I don't really know. <gasps> oh, no. It was you. Or wasn't you? I, 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 I don't really know. The story, the storyline is just way too complicated for me in such a story-driven game. And there he is. There is Johannes. Why do you wish to fight me? I have many sons and daughters lost. That was a king that brought you ruin, not I. He lied to us. He said he was wounded, yet it was only something, something, something. Pitted us against each other. Let me reject the king. Choose my family. The traitor Johannes. So this is going to be an attempt at him. But uh, the actual battle where I try over and over to try to kill him is going to be in the next video, so enjoy the attempt. There's the Fountain of Youth, so it looks like I haven't even been able to hit him yet. He hasn't hit me yet. I have some pretty good mobility. Finally, that spike shield uh, hitting me, and he doesn't have a lot of life. Look at that. Two hits, three hits, and, you know, maybe that's 15% of his life, so should be able to take him down pretty fast. Unfortunately, because I am coming from the last boss battle, I'm not going to have a lot of life, and you cannot block his body hits. You can only block his, uh, you know, his weapons and stuff. You can't block it when he touches you unlike most other bosses in the game and he finally catches up with me and slices me down and that's going to be it stay tuned for the next video wah wah wah